is another day with the physicians where your health is our business. So they are not going to take some drastic measures. But a 10 year old coming. But also to know that it's not only when your pressure is high that you have your COVID. Sugar. And I don't know about the other one, but what do you know on this part? You're welcome back to the other one. Africa, Nigeria has the highest number of people with diabetes with an estimated 3.9 million people. As we might already know, diabetes is a metabolic disease that causes high blood sugar. This damages organs and tissues throughout your body. The higher your blood sugar is and the longer you live with it, the greater your risk for complications. Diabetes can lead to serious medical conditions, but can we really manage the condition with medications and lifestyle changes? We'll find out more from our expert on your regular TV program, The Physician. Welcome to the Physicians, where your health is our business. If you are just joining us, do understand that this is a very important program that runs every Saturday, 7.30 p.m. West African time. And today we are going to be talking about something very important, a medical condition that, you know, it's taking life silently without people even thinking about it. My name remains Dr. Memuna Yusuf Kadri and of course on our regular program I'm never alone. I'm always with my lovely co-host. My name is Dr. Matsina Agbenye. You look lovely. Thank you. You too. You're looking really good too. <laughs> Dr. Matsina, we are talking about something very important today. Um, though the viewers are, are not so much in the low but we are talking about diabetes. Hmm. Diabetes. diabetes. You know, the way people will call it diabetes. Diabetes. Sugar disease. Sugar disease. DM. Is there any, any worry with triggers to diabetes in this global pandemic? Of course there is, Mimona. I must tell you that. Even though even the expert will tell us more, even though he will, he will tell us more about say, uh, diabetes, we know the causative factors, the reasons, the risk factors. And of course with pandemic. The risk factor that will come to mind the most is obesity. Exactly. And why obesity? Because with the pandemic, the tendency is to sit at home and eat. And eat. Increase eat. horizontally. You won't say people are fat. No, they have increased horizontally. Well nice. endowed. Yeah, well endowed. No, you can be looking good. <laughs> because some people are actually looking for that. But the thing is that we know that diabetes is a major risk factor when it comes to a lot of medical conditions aside from diabetes. The truth, the, the most painful aspect is uh, that it affects children. That's true. Yeah. We have children. Children yeah. also have diabetes, apart from adults having diabetes. And one thing is, have you, have you ever had anyone, a close relative with diabetes before? Yeah, there's a um, history of um, diabetes in some of my friends I do know. Mine, my family know, because as is mainly another medical condition, but diabetes, I've, I, had, I have a friend whose mom, dad, Two of us siblings. Well, I don't even go too far. Yeah. In my own family, my dad was diabetic, hmm. and he managed it for over thirty. For something that is, that is the thing a lot of people need to know too. And, and I know, you know, managing what? it. I was part of the management. Then I wasn't even medical school. I was still in secondary school, and uh, we now we knew how to do amala. The, mm. the plant, the black plantain. The black, yeah. Then we used to cut the plantain, put them dry, dry it up, mm. and you, you blend it. 
and my father was very, very dedicated. He never missed it. He, the dietary control was excellent. And that, that is the most important yes. lifestyle, yes. lifestyle changes. Of course, but you know, we have an expert, and this expert is going to break it down yeah. because this is our area, this is our field, this is what she, this is the field she has been for years, managing people and, uh, and, and, and I can't wait for her to come on board to, of course, enlighten everybody. We'll be right back after this time out. Do stay with us. us welcome to your regular tv program the physicians where your health is our business today we'll be talking about diabetes the causes the risk factors complications and of course management and to do justice to this very important medical condition is a renowned consultant endocrinologist and the medical director of rainbow medical center please help me welcome dr afoke is he aware? Hope I got it right, right? Yes, you did. Welcome on board, ma'am. Thank you. Lovely. Lovely. Thank you. <laughs> nice to see now. you after yeah. a very long time. It's almost 20. 20 is over 20 she years. She looks so gorgeous in that green. No, this is what they say green with envy, kind of. <laughs> That's okay. No, this topic today is very significant in this global pandemic. It is. I think we should start from there. Let's link diabetes with COVID 19. I will take the two bullets. Yes. Okay. <laughs> I'm good to go. Diabetes is not a death sentence. Good. If you're living with diabetes, it is not a death sentence. It's a wake-up call for you to be more health conscious and do things properly. Um, before I go to what the relationship between diabetes and COVID is, um, I'll just talk about what diabetes is. Diabetes is a, is a condition in which the body has a problem. I'm trying to break it down, break it down yeah. so you would understand. Yeah. It's a condition in which the, the carbohydrates we eat uh, remain in our blood. So the sugar level in the blood is quite high. Uh, and this high blood sugar brings about symptoms and can cause problems. Now, there are several types of diabetes, but I'm just going to, for the purpose of this talk, I'll just go to the three uh, main types. So you have uh, type 2, which is the common, what over 90% of people would have. And then you have type 1, and then you have what we call gestational diabetes, which is diabetes that is first diagnosed uh, during pregnancy. Now, um, type 1 diabetes is the one that the body doesn't make insulin at all. So people with type 1 diabetes need insulin to survive. And usually the symptoms are very, very severe in persons living with uh, diabetes. So you just see weight loss, frequent urination, excessive thirst. If nothing is done, the person can go into a coma. Whereas type 2 diabetes is, is not as aggressive as type 1 diabetes, but they both have their problems, they both cause their complications. So you would find people, about half of the people with type 2 diabetes do not have symptoms. But the sugar is high and then they're walking around. Unlike malaria where you would have a headache or COVID where you would probably uh -huh, where you would probably be a bit breathless and all. Remember COVID, over 90% of the people with COVID do not have uh, yeah. symptoms. So likewise diabetes, about half of the people with diabetes, you'll just pick them up at the eye clinic. They have cataracts or they're going blind or you pick them up after they have suffered a, a stroke. So for, for type 2 diabetes, uh, which is more common as you get older, you have a, you have a family history, 
but people with type 2 diabetes usually uh, are older than people with uh, type 1 diabetes. Look, I'm not questioning you. You said type 1, they don't make insulin. Yes. What is insulin? So that they will understand Thank what you. insulin is. So insulin is a hormone produced by an organ in the body called the pancreas. Insulin has uh, several functions. The most important one is to get sugar from your blood into the cells where it is needed. Okay. So in diabetes, there's either no insulin or the insulin there is not working. And so sugar remains in the blood and causes problems. So back to diabetes and uh, COVID. So COVID likes diabetes. Mm. COVID likes diabetes, okay. Yes. So um, if you look at the, the risk factors and all, for COVID, mm. you see people with diabetes there have a higher diabetes. risk of coming down with um, COVID. And when they have it, they tend to do, uh, they, they don't do as well as people um, without um, COVID. So you want to tell us about the risk factors for diabetes? For diabetes, yeah. yes. So um, let me start off with type 2. So first of all, if you have a family history, what do I mean by family history? Your father, your mother, your brother, your sister, your uncle, anybody in your family that has been diagnosed with diabetes, that increases your risk. Two, as you get older, your risk increases mm. as well. Sedentary lifestyle is also a risk factor. Obesity, if your weight is too much for your height, is a risk factor. And then we find out as well that people living with uh, some other non-communicable uh, diseases yes, yes, yes. like uh, hypertension and cholesterol also have a higher risk for diabetes. So if you're living with uh, hypertension or have cholesterol problems, then uh, you should be watching out for um, sugar problems as well. And then um, um, ethnicity. So we know that in America, the African-Americans have a higher um, risk. So if you have black African, your risk for coming up with diabetes is higher. Uh, for type 1 diabetes, if you ha also have a family history, yes. And then environmental factors like COVID. COVID is a viral infection. Yeah. So there are environmental triggers we find in some endocrine conditions. Um, the viruses attack the pancreas and then uh, um, the person can uh, come down with uh, uh, diabetes, so there's a virus oh. uh, as well. The and virus attacks the pancreas, which is what produces the insulin. Yes, okay, yes. So that is the link. Yes. And then back to your COVID question. So if you have had COVID, you need to be monitoring your sugar level and your uh, thyroid function. Even if you were not a diabetic? If, if, even if you were not a diabetic. That's not patient. interesting. It's not interesting. But these are the things um, we're finding out in the field of um, endocrinology. So there's a handshake between uh, the endocrine <sighs> system <sighs> and, <sighs> and COVID. Maybe if you just take us to the symptoms. What are the symptoms uh, of diabetes in, 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 in adults? Okay. So when we talk about symptoms, remember I said for type 2, half of the people will not have symptoms. So you must, if you're over 30 and you have a family history of diabetes, start checking your annual checks. You do that. If you're over 40, you go and check. Just those routine health things because half of the people will not come up unless maybe type 1. So the lucky people that would have symptoms, increased urination, feeling thirsty all the time, drinking water. It may be the heat and it may not be the heat. So you go and check. Unexplained weight loss. All of a sudden you see someone who had, was weighing so much and then without exercising or without going on any diets, uh, the person starts dropping sizes. Um, it, that's a warning sign. Excessive hunger. Mm. Eating, feeling hungry, and then you don't know where the food is going into because it doesn't show, it's not showing on your body. Apart from that, there's some other subtle uh, uh, signs like recurrent yeast infections in women. Candida okay. could be a warning sign for diabetes. Some people would, could have um, eczema. eczema or recurrent boils. And then some people, it may just be during the antenatal. If you have a high 
uh, upset, you have a bad obstetric history, uh, excess, uh, recurrent intrauterine deaths or still, still beds. Now things are better because if you have a family history of diabetes, as you're getting pregnant, they do screening for diabetes for you. If you don't have a family history of diabetes by your uh, second trimester, they will do the glucose tolerance uh, test for you. So it can creep up at, um, any, point. at any point in time. Mm. Well, so, people yeah. always talk about, um, there's this myth, I don't know if it's a myth actually, that taking a lot of uh, soft drinks, <laughs> yeah. taking some that is sugary, yeah. can actually trigger, food, that, so. yeah, uh, can trigger diabetes. Mm. Uh, that sugar, excessive intake of sugar in your tea can actually cause diabetes. For somebody who is already predisposed. Okay. Mm -hmm. So if you, are at, if you are already at risk. If you are already at risk, your genes, your weight, mm. you are not exercising. Taking excessive soft drinks is like adding uh, kerosene to the fire or petrol to the fire for someone oh, wow. who is... This is okay, getting this really, is. really interesting because it's good that we, you are enlightening everybody out there knowing fully well that when you take these soft drinks, it's not just a meat, but if you're already predisposed, yeah. it's something that you have to really look out for. And so hold it. We are coming back to you because there are more questions that we need to enlighten our viewers out there. We'll be right back after this short break. I don't really have much knowledge about what uh, diabetes is, but I know diabetes is a sickness that is being caused by too much sugar. Diabetes is a disease caused by lack of insulin in the body. I know diabetes is a sickness caused by an excess sugar. Some of the side effects is like if you, if you are injured, the, the injury doesn't go as in it, it takes time to heal. I think one of the side effects is that it breaks our immune system and somebody that is having a diabetes can easily be attacked by any sickness because the immune system is already broken. The vision is that when you have a wound, it will hardly heal and also it can affect the eyesight as well. One, it may be, it may be hereditary. If somebody has uh, maybe his family that has that kind of sickness, it may be inherited, and that's one. Then the other thing that causes diabetes is especially what we eat. Diabetes is caused by the lack of insulin in the body and excess of intake of sugar or carbohydrates. Uh, I know one or two, though I don't really stay close to them, but I know this person is sick of diabetes. Yeah, I know. I, I know of one, but that is, unfortunately that one is late. Yeah, she had diabetes, she had an accident on Okada, and the leg, you know, got caught. But we thank God that finally it was treated and is healed now. I guess you must have also enjoyed keeping up with the physicians, with our viewers on the street, with the amazing answers to what diabetes is and how it's affecting each and every one of us. Now back to the studio and with our lovely guest, Dr. Afoke Isiawe. I need to be able to call this over and over again. And you know, she has been educating us with all the brilliant information we've been dying you know, to, to find answers to why if you are taking sugar a lot in your drinks, in your tea, and you are predisposed, meaning you are already at risk. That means a family member already has a di diabetes in your family or you are obese and all that, you are likely to also have diabetes. So, Doc, you know this matter when it comes to pregnancy is also another area where people are not really clear about. So that gestational diabetes is a diabetes that has been known during pregnancy. How common is that? And what are the things that we should look at, especially for first-time mothers and, you know, families that are at risk? Okay. 
Remember I mentioned the risk factors for diabetes? So I mentioned yes. race and ethnicity. Okay, yeah. So amongst pregnant black women, it is not a rare condition. It is common. Wow. Now, the story about gestational diabetes doesn't end with the pregnancy. So the diabetes that is first diagnosed during pregnancy doesn't end there. So it's a warning that you may develop full-blown diabetes later on. After the baby is after out? After the baby is out. So the fact that you had gestational diabetes, some women, after pregnancy, go back to having normal, normal blood, blood sugar, sugar levels. So about a third of the women would go back to normal sugar levels. A third will remain borderline sugar, and then a third will continue to have uh, diabetes. I mentioned borderline sugar or pre-diabetes or impaired glucose um, levels. So you may go for a check and then they say, your sugar is not normal, but it is not high enough to be called diabetes. That state called pre-diabetes or impaired glucose tolerance is not a benign state. So let me speak English. <laughs> so yeah. people who have borderline sugar can also have complications. Okay, like those with, like, with like diabetes. Like those with diabetes. Okay. So you talked about the risk factors. You talked about the types of diabetes, type 1, type 2, gestational diabetes. Can we talk about the management? How can it be managed? All right. So management is what will I say? Uh, it's a 360 thing. Uh, so it's holistic. It's a holistic. So it's not just medication. Medication is a small part of it. We talk about your diet. We talk about your lifestyle. And then the support. What support is there for you? Yeah. There are pe persons living with diabetes. The family members are clueless. So when they cook, they cook as if yeah. it's normal. It's, 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 a, it's a normal, normal thing. thing. So going to medications. So some people, the type two, will do well on tablets. Okay, there's some injectables, and then the type ones usually would do insulin, and then for type two, they may require insulin at a point in time, probably when there's an infection like this COVID I mentioned or if they're going for surgery, or they're pregnant, they may need to be on uh, insulin. insulin. The type 1's insulin is a standard therapy. Now, after medications, we talk about diet. The truth is everybody needs to eat right. like people living with diabetes. We talk about portions. So your plates, half of your plates should be vegetables. Quarter <laughs> carbohydrates, quarter protein. You laughed because you know here it's the other way around. It's the other way around. So half of the plate will likely be rice. <laughs> Carbohydrate. <laughs> Exercise is important. As much as you can tolerate, just get moving. Technology helps us. You can right. get a Fitbit or get anything that you can use to track your activity level. Yeah. Just get moving. If you work in the office from morning till night. Whether you are living with diabetes or you don't have diabetes, get up intermittently and move. and move around. And then stress management. Support. Dr. Kadri, you know that now. <laughs> stress Very management important. is important. Family support. Please, if you have a relative living with diabetes, help the person. The people go through a lot of emotional uh, challenges, especially when other family members do not understand. If we have to go on, I verily believe we have so much more that the viewers uh, will benefit from it. So that is the reason why, please, on the national television, we are going to beg Dr. Isiawe to please come back and complete this particular edition on diabetes because you can see that there is so much more oh that you are gaining from this particular Especially program. the yeah. uh, home care, home care which, which is very important. important. You have to wear, you know, cutting your nails, Biting, food care, food care, food care. So important. Yes, there's a whole so, lot. So, yeah. Dr. Isiawe, please, we need an addendum to this particular program because that home care is very key. People want to know how to manage themselves, irrespective of 
the support, the medication, and of course, the lifestyle changes. But for this, we we'll say thank you very much for your time, for your expertise, and of course, for enlightening us on this very important topic. And for our viewers out there, you've heard it from her. Diabetes is real. You've heard that if you want to eat your food, the plate, half of that plate should be vegetables. If there's no green, it's not nice. Let the food be beautiful. Just ensure you have the green there. Then at least another portion of it can have your protein. But we also heard it from her. She said, there's nothing like don't eat this, don't eat that. Don't. Yeah. Everything is just portion. It's yeah. very, very important because in our environment, we don't have enough to manage diabetic patients as per meals, but we have everything. Just ensure you take little of everything. You have to do it, but party size is fine. It's just small. <laughs> Remember, diabetes is not a death sentence. It exactly. Is. exactly. It's Thank not you. a death sentence. So till next time, stay blessed. And please don't forget to follow us on all our various social media platforms. And if you want to watch this program, a repeat of it, Go to our YouTube page and you'll be blessed with so many other um, episodes right there. God bless us all.